What is up guys, this is Slim Shady Graphics here, here to show you a video of how to make these really cool wallpapers. So it's pretty easy and pretty simple, so anyways, let's just get right into it. So guys, from basically what you just seen right there, um, as we were getting started, it's actually pretty easy to do on the most part. You can use this for YouTube tutorials if you actually want to make one yourself and maybe show off your own cool idea that you have with this. Uh, you can use it for other tutorials. That you've seen um, like me for example I looked at some 3d text tutorial plus using this and creating something really cool out of it to make a cool banner um, so of course you know what I mean just uh, I would recommend doing that with most Photoshop tutorials making something cool out of it along with other tutorials to mix in more together um, to make maybe channel banners or anything for a website and so on so anyways we're just gonna hop right into it right here so we're just gonna click on file and we're gonna click on new of course in order to actually do this. Um, so from right here, before we actually create our first layer right here to start out with, um, for when it comes to the width and height for your resolution basically, um, I would recommend just keeping it on what you have uh, normally for when you make your normal pictures from Photoshop. Uh, me, my monitor's uh, resolution is 1920 by 1080. So it doesn't really matter too much on me from when it comes to keeping it as it is right here for 1920 by 1080. Uh, depending on what your monitor is, I would recommend setting it to if you want to make a wallpaper out of it, which is what I'm doing and what I mostly do just because it's kind of fun to do in the first place. So feel free to name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name this one tutorial or just tut. We'll do that, of course. Click OK. And here we are. We're right in here. Pretty fun stuff. Got to love it. We're already in it already. We're already pumped up. Um, <laughs> so from here, we're going to click on the paint bucket tool and make sure you have black selected down here. So of course, if you don't know how to do that, you just click on the black box and you just drag down, click black. Or if you want to, you can click on these two little boxes on top of that and it'll already have it set for the foreground and background color already. So we're just going to click right anywhere inside the layer right here and it'll make everything black. So pretty nice stuff already. Uh, I'm just going to go back and click on the drag tool just because I don't like anything else selected. It's a big pet peeve I have. Um, big had it, uh, I guess you would say. So from right here, we're going to right click and I'm just going to click on to duplicate layer. This is for when we want to put in that cool fade effect that you've seen with uh, the wallpaper that I had that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, just because it gives a little bit of a cooler 3D effect or more of the effect actually being in the foreground more uh, just kind of a cool illusion that you can kind of pull off that's uh, pretty simple to do so i would recommend having that if you want to try out the shade effect but if you don't want to you don't have to so from right here we can click on filter this is um, where we're actually going to make this effect come in and we're going to go down to render you actually can try out other styles um, if you find any other pictures online if you want to go all out with them uh, maybe you can kind of do the same thing of what we're about to do, but anyways, you can try that later on or whatever. Uh, but from right here, uh, you're going to go to render and you can actually click on clouds, difference clouds or fibers. Uh, this, all three of these will give you that, um, this effect, uh, clouds and fibers. Um, they're a little bit different on how the effect shows because fibers shows a little bit more of the streaks that you'll see and clouds show more of a... Uh, blur type of effect so it's kind of depending on how you feel that you want your style to be but when you click on fibers though it's going to give you another pop-up but when you click on windows it's just going to go straight to this right here i want to click Control z just because i want to show you guys fibers just because that looks a little bit better in my opinion so i'm going to go back to render and click on fibers and here we are with this pop-up window right here like i said before too you can follow up with this tutorial with the clouds part um after this, then we'll be at the same step for fibers and for clouds if you actually want to join along with me on doing this, of course. But if you're using fibers, you can have a set the same presets I have right here, 16 by 4. But of course, you can experiment and later on uh, if you want to try that out. So we're going to click OK. So here we are. Oh my gosh, it just looks amazing, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> so from what we're going to do right here to give it this streak effect, we're going to click on Filter. And then from right here, we are going to click on blur in the blur section. We're going to see motion blur and you'll just click it. So it's going to look a little bit different 
Um, but when you actually apply this motion blur effect, you'll start to see the similarities of how the effect is between using fibers and clouds and difference clouds. It doesn't really matter for clouds or difference clouds. They're kind of the same thing on how this effect is used. Um, but you'll definitely see the similarities for when it comes to this part. It's going to look a little bit different when you first open this up. It's going to probably look a little bit more like where the angle's at zero. Let me actually bring the zero. And the pixels are probably going to be pretty low, but I'm just going to go all the way to one right here. So as you can see, it doesn't really look as great. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to bring the distance up. And you'll start to see a little bit more blur occurring right here with the motion blur. And as we go more and more... Uh, through right here you'll start to see more streaks starting to come in now from here i would actually switch up the angle because it doesn't really look as great because you just see one big blur in the middle so if we actually bring it up to 52 degrees you'll see the streak coming down i personally really love it at between 80 to 90 degrees uh so that's kind of where it looks best at in my opinion but of course feel free to try it out as you wish so here is how it looks at 430 right now and as we bring it up higher and higher, more streaks start to show right here. And if you really want to show a crap ton of streaks, as you can see from right here, you can set it to 2000. Personally, in my opinion, I actually like bringing it pretty low. I like the streaks to open up. Uh, as you can see right here, they're a little bit bigger now. Uh, there is a little bit more fog though. Well, not a bit more fog, a little bit more blur basically. Um, which is the downfall of bringing the pixels down. But it doesn't matter too much. It does. It doesn't. When you apply the colors, then uh, it'll look a little bit better. So we're gonna click OK. So here we are. It's actually starting to look better from here. Uh, we're gonna right click on this, and we are going to click on blending options for this layer. So from in here, you can actually could choose any one of the overlays that you want in here. So I'm just gonna show you an example for using each one of these, depending on how you want the color to look like for this. So if we click on pattern overlay, we can go down to um, overlay. It doesn't look as bad. It doesn't look as great, but you're bringing the opacity down a little bit if you really want to. Um, or if you could just go down to multiply, it'll look a little bit better like that. And of course, we can use different patterns. So we can actually bring the opacity down a little, on this a little bit more. So as you can see, it actually looks kind of cool. Uh, but there's other effects that we can do right here that look a little bit neater. As you can see, that's how it looks like with overlay. That actually looks really cool. Uh, feel free to try that out if you really want to. <laughs> but of course, there's other effects as well that we can use right here. This one probably looks better with multiply. Yep, looks better with the multiply. Um, but of course, you can try it out with any anything right here that you want for the effects. Uh, you just have to switch up the multiply and you have to switch up the overlay. And if it still doesn't look as great, I'll bring the opacity down like this. So feel free to do however you want to with that. Uh, color overlay, we already know how this is. Change any color you want. Go like this, go green, go blue. And then bring the opacity up all the way. You can go to multiply. Or you can go to overlay. As you can see with overlay, it's a little bit brighter. Uh, but those are the only two uh, ones I highly prefer when it comes to doing this. Uh, we're going to go back to multiply because it looks better. I actually might use this color right here. Uh, let's actually go to gradient overlay. So here's gradient overlay right here. In my opinion, it doesn't really look as great with rainbow. I actually tried it out, test it, and see how it is. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't look as great because it does get a little bit dark, even though you can use the hue and saturation to bring it up a little bit. If you actually want me to show you guys, I'll actually do it right now uh, just to show you. So let me see how it looks like with overlay. And it's a little bit too bright. We're going to go back to multiply. Click OK. And what we can do from right here is click on hue and saturation. Before we actually change any of the effects right here, let's right click and click on clipping mask. Just so it doesn't really affect anything else. It just affects the layer that we put the streaks in. And we can bring the lightness up a little bit. As you can see though, you see a little bit less lines as you bring the lightness up. So be pretty cautious about that. In my opinion, I don't think uh, rainbow really looks that great. So we're actually going to delete the hue and saturation layer and we're going to go back into blending options and as you can see we can actually change it up a little bit if we really want to like use this cool little gradient i made we can also use other ones this one actually looks really neat i like that for making other gradient presets and of course there's a lot more that you can test it out with and see how you like it of course uh the bronze one's another good one too if you want to make like gold out of it or something 
Um, but I'm actually going to cancel out of these, uh, exit out of here and go into the color overlay and just put on, you know what I mean? Good old cyan. That's what I call it. <laughs> Either cyan or bright turquoise. <laughs> so from right in here, this is actually, um, where we're actually going to need the eraser tool. And this is where that shading effect starts to kick in at. So click on the eraser and on the top left right here, bring the hardness all the way to zero. Uh, if you want it to be around 800, you can do that. I'm going to bring it down a tad bit um, just so I can get a little bit more room. It's kind of hard to move the mouse around for um, getting some of the shading effects in. So from right here, what you actually can do is feel free to do any effect that you really like to with the gradient right here. Uh, I'm going to do a kind of fun one where it just goes uh, where the gradient goes upwards. Um, so we're actually going to try that out real quick. And we're going to bring it down like that. We're going to make it a little bit more curving in so it doesn't really look as uh, straightened and messed up. There we go. Looks pretty cool. Uh, now we're going to do the other end right here. So we're just going to go down straight from here. And luckily, since you have the luckily since you have the hardness all the way to zero, it's not going to look too bad um, either way for when you uh, put in the shading effects in. So that's basically how the shading effect looks right there. Looks really neat. Looks really cool, yo. So that's basically how you make that effect. Um, we actually can add in more effects if we really want to. So for example, we actually can add something down here. So let's actually click on layer one right here, right click on it. And we're actually going to duplicate this layer as well. There we go. Skadoosh. So from right here, we actually can go to filter and let's go down to uh, render and let's actually try out clouds. As you can see, there's clouds. And as you can see, it actually looks really neat uh, this way as well. But we're not even done yet. So because we're actually going to try doing the same effects right here. So let's go down to motion blur. And as you can see, it looks really neat this way. Um, so let's actually click on. Actually, let's bring it down a little bit. So as you can see, it actually changed up a little bit with the motion blur on how we change it up. Um, we actually can set it to. Let's actually set it to 1094. Uh, we'll actually keep it at 80 as well to blend in with the cyan or turquoise. Either way you want to say it. Uh, and actually from right there, we can click on blending options. And if we click on color overlay, as you can see, it actually blurs out a little bit more. It actually looks pretty neat, but we're actually going to change the color a tad bit. Let's uh, bring it down. And we actually could change colors too if we really wanted to. So, I think right there should actually bring it up a tad bit more. And boom, there we go. As you can see, you basically just successfully made your own wallpaper right there. Uh, you can try doing the same way as I just did right here. And it looks really, usually looks pretty neat. Um, so, of course, if you want to throw in any cool effects that you've seen from other tutorials, I'd recommend trying that out, putting some text or anything, uh, either way. But that's basically how you create this really cool wallpaper of your own that you made. So, anyways, hope you guys definitely enjoyed this tutorial um, and liked it, of course, and hopefully it helped you out. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great one, and peace out.